Hey, this is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. What you're looking at is a program that works with these TV dongles, RSDR receivers. And the name of the program is RTL SDR Scanner. And it will do a wideband scan of your radio. And it doesn't, uh, you can't listen to the audio, it just looks at the signals. And you can make this a super wideband scan. So what I've done here, let me go back just a second and show you where I got this. Okay, here at rtl-str.com, one of the pages is a list of the rtl-str support software. And this is a great list. The only problem is it hasn't been updated in quite a while. I think the last update was December of last year. But still, it's a good reference. And it lists all or most of the software that's out there, free, most of it's free, that you can use to interface with these TV dongles and the SDR receivers. You know, like here's SDR Sharp, which I've not been able to get to work with this particular receiver I'm using. I've got it to work with other things. And then here's HD SDR, which is what I've been showing you. And then this list goes on and on and on. It starts off with programs that are actually <coughs> controls the radio so that you can use the dongle or SDR as a radio. And then it gets down further and it has programs that do specific things. And way down here, if I can get down to it, is the one I want to show you today. It's under single purpose RTL-SDR software. And right there it is, RTL SDR Scanner. And it runs under Windows, Linux, and Mac. And it's a Python, that's an operating language, operating system language. And when you load this thing on your Windows, in this case, it takes forever to load because it's got to load all the routines and... DLLs and everything for setting up a Python language environment on your computer. So if you've never run Python on your computer, it's got to load all this stuff up. As it was doing it, I'm like, oh boy, this might just destroy my computer setup. But it all came out good, and it's working, and the programs that I've been using before are still working. So all is good today <laughs> today so let's get back to the program so here is I ran a scan and I did a really wide band scan uh, it takes quite a while and I scanned or had the program scan from 30 megahertz to 1.1 gigahertz and the reason I went just above uh, 1 gigahertz is you're listening to those transponders on uh, airlines, they're at 1.090 megahertz. So I'm just curious to see if it was picking up anything. And of course, this scan goes to the frequencies, and if there's something there, when it's on a particular frequency, it'll catch it. If it's not, like that particular station or whatever is not transmitting, it'll look like nothing's there. <clears throat> There's a whole bunch, excuse me, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, There's a whole bunch of options with this software. As a matter of fact, I recently downloaded the manual. It has a lot of details. All these options down here, all these things you can do. And you can set the start and end frequency here. Now, because this was such a wide band sweep, I had to come over here 
and I decreased the dwell time on each frequency. It started out, it was 131 milliseconds. I changed it to 32 milliseconds. And then you can change the FFT size, how many samples it takes and everything. Which will, the higher that number, the more accurate or precise or whatever you want to call it, the display will be. It, it's basically the increment it does when it's going through the scan, increment frequency. So I changed that from 124 down to 64, and then this made a reasonable length of time to scan this huge band. I think it took about 20 minutes on this particular computer, which is it's only a dual core processor. It's about 12 years old, so it's not the best computer in the world. So anyway, I got this scan. Now you can save these plots and play them back later. So you can do various types of scan at different times of the day and play them back later. Also, down here, you can select the scanning mode, which is single, which is what I did, continuous or maximum. I'm not sure what maximum is. You know what continuous is? It just keeps scanning over and over and over again. So and it overwrites, I think it overwrites the previous scan. So it doesn't, I don't think it does an accumulation. Maybe that's what maximum does. And then he's got all these other variables you can set. You can zoom in on a particular frequency. Like for instance, um, we were looking, we were listening to the NOAA radio, the NOAA radio frequency, which is at 162.45 megahertz, thereabouts. I received two of the seven, I think, frequencies that are available. I can only receive two here locally. So you could zoom in down here, or you could set up a different scan for, like, say, uh, 162 to 163 and then you could get a nice detailed and then you could when you do that since it's nice and short you can change the dwell time and the FFT size okay so this is the soft 66 RTL SDR radio that's hooked up right when this scan was done so we can, if I can figure out which button here's, we can turn on zoom. We can turn zoom on, and what you do is you use the cursor and you highlight over a section you want to zoom on. Like that section right there. Should be around 162 megahertz. Well, I missed it. It's 100 to 115. So, what I would have to do is go back and zoom out. Now, what I wish is and there may be you know wish there was a way of typing in the frequency range you want to zoom on maybe i'll do that i haven't learned that so we come down here and we do go back to auto range frequencies well yeah okay so that gives me back to the full range that i scanned originally so let's go, I think this might be the area I'm looking for. You can see there's some huge spikes here. So let's try this area and see if that's... I'm going to go a little further out there. It takes a few seconds for it to catch up. Now there we go. There's... 162 would be right in here. So I can zoom in some more. So let's go from 160 thereabouts to about here. Okay, now, there's might be what I'm looking for. 162, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. That's, there is, I believe, NOAA radio right there. There's the two frequencies that I receive. It's zooming in again. This is 
Now if I look down on the bottom here, bottom of the screen down here, it shows, I think, where I'm pointing. 162.4375. No, it's not changing. So let's turn off the zoom. And now see if it's changing. Yeah, now it's changing. Okay, so I go right to this point, and it says, uh, down at the bottom there, it says 162.4375 is that peak which is a little bit off it should be 162.450 but again these SDRs which require <clears throat> a little bit of calibrating because they can be a little bit off frequency since it's a very inexpensive device so I would expect right here is where the NOAA frequencies I normally receive is 162.45 and 162.55. So this is skewed a little bit. I don't know if there's any way I can adjust the frequency. It probably is because this thing's got a bazillion uh, things that you can change. And so I just want to show it to you again. This works with most. RTL SDRs, even the $20 ones, I believe, and it's working with the soft 66 um, SDR that I've been using. I didn't do any setup at all. I just installed the program and ran, and it was working. It found that receiver, and it's apparently working. So, anyway. That's the show for the day. That's, this is just one of hundreds of programs that are available for these little SDRs. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.